the, the conversation with Harriet Lyons saying that she had heard that Betty <laughs> was teaching women to masturbate spawned the idea that we talked about you that know, we might do that we a might workshop. do that and, and then what happened is that I was in this transition I couldn't make a living painting I was tired of being isolated in my studio and what was I going to do next and we were feminists we had gotten involved in the in the women's movement we were showing up at the conferences and you know this was a very exciting time the the, the sense at that time was that we were going to change the world mm -hmm. there was no doubt about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and that we were coming together with this energy in New York the, it was outrageous it was so exciting so I wanted to work with women and we didn't know exactly what to do but we knew that they needed to have orgasms and that they needed to change their diet mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. kind of the essence of what we were yeah, working and exercise with. movement exercise movement. yoga and we were very much into yeah. yoga mm -hmm. and so the workshop was a combination of health sex Yoga, <laughs> martial arts, <laughs> and massage. You know, massage, kind of a touch. And of course, and we figured out you. We had they had to look at their pussies because they none, no one was looking at them. Mm -hmm. And we just it was like each each group was different actually because yeah. yeah. we were experimenting. And how I see that how it happened was that the women designed the workshop. Mm -hmm. We were throwing out all these different possibilities. And some remember when we when I did the vomiting in the bathroom <laughs> the women fled <laughs> didn't catch on didn't catch on and, did. and I went oh I guess I've gone too far and she leans over and she says Betty it's the matriarch <laughs> <laughs> the and sign that was the sign but I you know, the other, other thing is that as each group of women came in they had their own needs it's just like when I have students in cold hydrotherapy and they come in. They come in from all different backgrounds, yeah. all different needs, all different levels of experience. So they, in a sense, design the training. I have a format, but it's, it really gets, the emphasis is placed on where they, their needs are. Yes. So that's really, I think, why that thing was more of an open and flowing thing. Is you, it's, you have a format, but as the women came in, they, they had different needs. And yeah, and it's been... That was that thing when we started off. We went around the circle, and each woman spoke. We would spend almost a whole day. Yeah, that was that was big. Yeah. And we listened to yeah. what they were saying. Uh, oh, that's right. And then the workshop designed itself, but it didn't get its design. The what I ran for the 22 years mm -hmm. didn't happen until about the end of the first or second year, mm -hmm. where yeah. we where we actually did group masturbation. Yeah. Because we were demonstrating, we didn't have any image that the whole group would ever do this together. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, evolved. That that was too far out. We didn't even we couldn't even go there. But the day that it happened, I said, "This is my recall." I said, "You know, I have a fantasy that." Um, that a group of women will get together and sit in a circle like this and we'll all have an orgasm together and it'll be simultaneous and the, the whole building will levitate and you know the <laughs> orgasm energy yeah. will you know the people in the washroom downstairs will start having sexual feelings and the and the, and the doorman will start masturbating <laughs> and one of the women said oh let's do it do you remember that i i don't remember that exact moment but i remember you saying that whole idea about what would happen if we and then you went and got a case of vibrators that we were selling mm -hmm. and started plugging them in now where did you get the case of vibrators we always had them there to sell yeah yeah must have been eve's garden I mean, well, no. At that time, Eve's got you know, Del. Uh, I got them at Macy's and in, oh, in, the, okay. in the small appliance. Okay. And I bought them, you know, regular price, and sold them for what I paid. But we had them available because when we demonstrated, okay. we were using the wand. Okay. Or the panabrader. Well, a panabrader. Yeah, I don't know when we got on the wand. I remember the panabrader. I think we were doing the panabrader okay. then. Okay. But the whatever we were using to do our demo, uh -huh. we went and got a case of them so the women, when they left, they could buy one. And that was the day that they all, every, everybody started plugging them in, and I was about to have a heart attack. And I thought, oh, I don't think we can do. I don't think it's legal. I guess I. <laughs> I don't know. If this is dangerous. And I had that feeling it was dangerous. And I, come on, if they were ready to do it, I had to. I had to go with it. Now, so, what have both of you learned from doing the workshops about female sexuality? Like, what did you think you know, but looking back on it, you went, ah. Like, you can see patterns in behavior, you know what I mean? To see all of these women come in and talk about their orgasm and their body image and masturbate. Is there any reflections? 
we're no better off today than we were then. I was amazed by the openness of the women. You know, the, there were the numbers that of women that would um, call and come in. You know, that would blow my mind. And we had lawyers, doctors, uh, advertising executives, yeah. housewives, yeah. Cor mothers. Corporate people, you know, there were corporate women, yeah. that came, all different, you know, levels. Bit women from the suburbs, women from the corporations in New York City. The most radical ones were the, were the housewives from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. <laughs>